this is Reiko Haro here with Anime on Location. I'm here with Zero Randall. Uh, Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm not doing too bad. How about you? All right, myself. And so we're going to start out the first question with how did you get into the world of art and voice acting? So for art, I have been pretty much doing art since I could pick up a crayon, much to the dismay of my mother and the walls of our house. Um, it's honestly something that's always been driving me uh, since that time, uh, both art and writing, um, from a need to tell stories. And at first I felt that I needed to tell those stories visually and visually things that are connecting to me and really inspiring me. And I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to know that someone else out there saw something I drew and were inspired by it. As far as voice acting is concerned, it's pretty much the same gig. I went through theater and improv classes when I was in high school, up through college, and I just loved the idea of entertaining people. If I can get anyone to forget what they're going through, even for five minutes, I call that a win. And as far as getting into the voice acting side of things, it was as simple as me putting my name on the cattle call audition list for ADV Films, and then a year later they called me in, and they're like, okay, we like the sound of you, so we'll, we'll put you in stuff. Awesome. And pardon me for a second. Blah. Technology. <laughs> so tell us about your art, probably the focal point of what you do. The focal point of what I tend to do, what really, I guess you can say, drives me and turns my crank is I love the aesthetic of armor, clothing, and weapons and that kind of interplay. So anytime I get a bit my personal work or a client commission, I've done a lot of stuff for people who play World of Warcraft, I've done some stuff for Blizzard and things like that, video game characters, anything that goes to the extreme in terms of just weird and wacky design and how I might think to make that a little bit more functional is absolutely just geek nip to me. So like the detail. Oh yes, the more detailed the better, the more complex the better. Uh, I liken it to a lot of the stuff you see coming out of movie concept art or game concept art when it's not necessarily the stuff you see in the final product, it's the what if aspect is absolutely thrilling to me. Awesome. And not to be outdone by other guests here, you also are a voice actor, so tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, it's addictive, I can tell you that right now. If you step into the booth, you're not going to want to step out, and all of the voice actors will tell you pretty much the same. But the best thing about it, in all earnestness, is the idea that you can come in and portray a character, but no one necessarily cares about what you look like, how you're dressed, how you're necessarily presenting yourself. It's purely your voice. That's all they care about, and you can do so much with that. And every single show you step into, no matter if they're using your normal speaking voice or something a little bit more off-key, it's a challenge. And that will motivate you to try to do better the next time. Okay. And you have a couple, you have a couple up on your fellow guests. Tell us about the Zero the music Musician. Zero the Musician. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's definitely something I, I, I dabble in. I did some work for independent animations out there. For a long time, I was doing a lot of electronic music work under the moniker of Sir Jester. And recently, uh, since I've picked up the guitar and processing through that, I've done a lot of uh, video game and geeky music covers. Like I did a symphonic metal version of the Darkwing Duck theme just because I could. I, I thought it was going to be a cool idea. I asked my wife. I'm going to do Darkwing Duck. She's like, yeah, totally, do Darkwing Duck. And that's basically it. And the music, more than anything else, is really what you find as far as my hobby is concerned, even when I treat it professionally. Because this is purely me doing something, not because it was asked for, not because it was paid for, but because it struck me and I wanted to do it. Oh, that's interesting. All right. And there, you're an author. Yes. And tell us what genres you like to write about. I love particularly anything that's speculative fiction. So, for instance, the first uh, publications I've done have been primarily in the steampunk genre. Not the aesthetic, but more the speculative fiction side of mad science and weird creations. And I say this a lot on my panels, but I honestly believe that the sweetest phrase in the entire English language, what spawned all this, is what if. 
It's people sitting around just thinking, what if or wouldn't it be cool if? So the Rime of uh, the Golden Aegis and the Archetype Trilogy or Tales of Colopa are definitely that great Jules Verne kind of speculative fiction. And I also love that epic sprawling sweep of fantasy with all the minutia and world building detail. And beyond that, I love urban fantasy. Anything that you can take that is mundane and just absolutely great toned and throw some magic into it, uh, you have me a hello. Awesome. And let's see here. So, I guess the logical question here is how do you juggle all of those, these things? Like, <laughs> seriously. Uh, I, I often make the joke that it's not Zero Reynolds, it's Zero Reynolds and a cast of thousands of milligrams of caffeine. So I don't actually sleep that much, much to my wife's chagrin. And the only part I have that's difficult about it is not necessarily juggling it, it's not letting my attention wander. Because I, I often say I have creative ADHD. So something will strike me, I'll go off on a tangent, I'll have to curb myself back to it, and it's all about self-discipline with your work ethic, honestly. There's so many hours in the day that we kind of fritter away when you can get all this other stuff done, particularly if you're creative and you want to share yourself with the world. So you make sure to get everything out there, basically. Oh, it's awesome. And for the fans that would like to learn a little bit more about you, where can they find you on the internet? They can find me online. Uh, there's a blog called Zero Should Be Writing. I can't remember the URL off the top of my head, but just Google Zero Should Be Writing, and that's my blog. They can also find me at uh, zergester.com, or if they want to peruse some of my work on DeviantArt, I'm under the username of zergester. Awesome. And are there any current or upcoming projects that you could talk about at this time? Yes. I'm currently working on uh, talking about epic fantasy again. I'm working on the first of what's going to be an epic fantasy series of books called Sword Waltzer, and I'm first shopping that to tour, and if they turn it down, we'll be starting to go down the list. Aside from that, after I finish the work on uh, the first book of Sword Waltzer, I'll be turning right around to work on the second book of the Archetype Trilogy and adherent novellas that are connected to that, which are all self-published. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure.